So our app models information about courses at the university. And so one of the files in here is a data model. So this is the model I'm looking, I'm in the models directory, I'm looking at something called summary.java. And of all the code that we've provided for you, this may be the piece that is the most familiar because it looks a lot like data models we built ourselves on the homework problems and in the lessons. Um, there are some new features here and there are some components of this model that um, are based on ideas that we're sort of just encountering together in the lessons now. And so some of this will make a little bit more sense like in a couple of days uh, when you see a little bit more about interfaces, um, about anonymous classes and about Lambda expressions, but let's go through it together. So um, this course is a data model for a summary, course summary. So the course summary uh, has some fields. It has a year, it has a semester, it has a department, it has a number, and it has a title. So that's like the information needed to summarize a course. And that's what you're going to use in the view, that main activity view, to show a list. There's other information about courses that you have access to in the files that we've given you, including things like the longer description of the course and like who's teaching it and what room it's scheduled in and stuff like that. This is all uh, in that in one of the JSON files that we've given you. But to get started, we're just working with a subset of that information. One of the things I want to point out here is that um, there are no set getter, there are no centers for these fields, just getters, and that's because um, we don't expect them to change. So uh, we're going to set this up in a way that these won't change after they're created, and uh, so we haven't provided setters. There's an empty constructor here, and you may wonder. So there's this full constructor that sets all the fields. We know how that works. It just takes all the fields as parameters and sets them when an instance of the class is created. But there's also this empty constructor. And the reason why this empty constructor here is, is because of the uh, serialization library that we're using called Jackson, which requires that it be here. Uh, Jackson doesn't work without an empty constructor. Um, and so please don't remove this. Uh, you'll see that there's, a, uh, there's a, a, a thing here to suppress a warning about this not being used, because if you do remove this, uh, things will break. Um, okay. We have an equals method that uh, compares courses based on the year, semester, department, and number. You'll see that the title is not part of this. Uh, hash code, same thing. We're using the objects.hash method to, com to compute a hash code. Um, okay, so now down here at the bottom, here's the stuff that's a little new. And here's the things that uh, we, we're going to have to think about uh, working with. Um, as we start to to implement our code here. So, and, and you're going to do some work with some of these. So first of all, this code right here, um, you'll see at the top that uh, this part looks familiar to you, right? Public class summary, that's just, you know, defined in a new Java class. But then we have this implements sorted list adapter dot view model. We're starting to talk about interfaces the week that we release this uh, checkpoint. Um, so this is something that will make a little bit more sense to you once we talk about interfaces on a lesson, uh, which is kind of a nice synergy between these two things. Um, but the idea here is that there's some functionality that we need to provide, and this is because we're using a library to render that list of courses in the view. Um, you don't need to understand this or, or do anything with this, but that is the reason that these two methods are here. Uh, is same model as and is content the same as? Those are to implement the sorted list adapter dot view model interface. Okay, so those you can just leave alone. They're correct. The code that we've given you will already work. What needs more attention are these two methods down here. These are methods that you will need to modify in order to get uh, the list view to work properly and to finish this checkpoint. And so let's talk a little bit about what these do. When we talk about interfaces, we're going to talk about the comparable interface that a Java object can implement. Uh, comparable allows one instance of an object to be compared to another instance. There's another interface in Java called comparator, not comparable, comparator. And comparator uh, compares two instances of an object to each other. And so, and, and okay, so, so this is going to be very scary and, and, and potentially frightening um, until we talk about Lambda expressions, but this right now says, and the idea is that a comparator returns a number, it's similar to comparable, negative one, zero, or one, depending on the order in which uh, the two uh, instances should be put in an ordered list, for example. Right now it's returning zero all the time, meaning that the two objects are always uh, comparable, and that's the reason why that list of courses isn't sorted properly. So once you fix this, 
um, and you actually compare the two instances of course properly, all of a sudden that main activity, the course view list will, will uh, start to work magically. Uh, so that'd be pretty cool. Um, the second thing down here, and again, this is using some new things about Java that we haven't shown you quite yet. Um, this is uh, doing what's called a filter. Okay, so um, a list is similar in Java to an array. And the idea here is that this is required for that search function to work. So remember when we searched, didn't work right now. Uh, what we want is we want as we search, as we add text to that box, the list of courses that are shown should only include courses that contain that text. And so you need to uh, figure out how to do that in order to finish this summary function. And we'll be talking about using lists uh, soon. And we also will put some information in the write-up about how to use them. Uh, so you get a little bit of uh, practice with that. But um, so these two uh, methods down here are things that you will have to do some work on in order to finish the MP. In neither case, are you gonna have to write a lot of code? Remember, one of the goals of the MP is not having you write a lot of code. It's confronting you with a kind of smallish, medium-sized project that has some unfamiliar things and unfamiliar features and some new concepts and ideas. We're not expecting that you write a lot of code. We are expecting that it's probably gonna take you a while to finish the small amount of code that you do have to write because you're gonna have to be uh, encountering some of these new things, working out some things on your own, puzzling through how different things work on the project and things like that. That's normal, right? So when you're done, you're probably gonna look at this and be like, oh my gosh, it took me you know, hours and hours to just write those few lines of code. Um, but that was time spent learning, exploring, fiddling, investigating all the things that you do when you work on a real uh, piece of code. Okay, uh, so that's our, that's our summary model. As part of an upcoming checkpoint, you're actually gonna add another model to the system to represent the full information about the entire course. But for now, we're just dealing with, you know, the, the smallest amount of information needed to kind of uniquely identify a course and display it nicely in our view. So the year, semester, department, number, and then the course title, which uh, allows us to display uh, the course really nicely in that list.